General Mills presents June and Stu Irwin in Trouble with Father. I hope that a meeting of the family council will not inconvenience you too much. Well, as a matter of fact, it is Saturday morning, and unless it's terribly important... Well, I think it is. Golly, what shall somebody do now? The meeting will come to order. As Vice President in charge of the Treasury, it is my extreme pleasure to announce that the Irwin Exchequer shows a surplus of $424.84. Why, Stu! Daddy! That's simply fabulous! What does it mean in plain English? Well, it means we're practically plutocrats. Now I know less than I did before. What Daddy means is that the Treasurer's report shows that we have almost $425 in cash. Although I must say I don't see how we did it. Good management, my dear. Why, thank you, darling. Hey, you're welcome. Now, if we can continue with the meeting, I would like to offer for consideration the advisability of using this money on a new car. A new car? God, that would be super! Could we afford it? Yeah, if we can get a reasonable turn-in allowance on our old one. Let's get a convertible. A yellow one. With red leather seats and all the buttons so everything rolls up and down. And great big fog lights and... Girls, girls. The kind you're talking about, I couldn't even buy the fog lights. June, the chair would like an expression, please. Well, if you think it's the thing to do. Well, the purpose of these questions is for an exchange of ideas. Now, wouldn't it be a false economy to spend more money on repairs on the old car? I suppose so. It's just that, well... I had hoped we could do some redecorating this year. Oh, yes, that would be nice. Or at least the living room. Oh, sure, the living room. So you're going to be a big deal with your new boyfriend. Well, that's a perfectly vile accusation. Well, if you think we're going to give off a snazzy new car just so you can have your friends over... I was simply taking into consideration the president's suggestion for redecorating. The president could use some air. The meeting will please come to order if that's possible. Now, June, if you'll be patient, after I've shopped around on trade-ins, maybe we'll still be able to reach a compromise about furniture. Oh, it's all right. I just thought it might be fun to do the room over in Victorian, perhaps. But that can wait. I make a motion we appoint Stu Irwin a committee of one to make all final decisions regarding a new car. Second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Good. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Joyce. What is this about a new boyfriend? Oh, he isn't exactly a boyfriend. He's sure not a girlfriend. Oh, honestly, Father, that child will force me into an early marriage just to get away from her. <laughs> anyway, his name is Stanley, and I'm sure you like him better than Rodney. That will take practically no effort. Well, Joyce, I want to tell you one thing. If this Stanley thinks he's going to sit around our living room all evening with his arm around you, smooching... Oh, Father, that's disgusting. Honestly, the things you pick up from Willie. I did not learn about smooching from Willie. I mean, uh... I know. Well, don't worry about the boys and their smooching. I didn't learn judo at summer camp for nothing, you know. See oh. you later. <laughs> Keep your head down, dear. Joan, I want you to have a talk with Joyce about those boys and their... Smooching. Oh, I know, dear. Yes, yes. Jackie! I'm ready, Daddy. Now, this time I want you to keep your eye on that road at the fifth tee. You know how I slice. What in the world? My caddy. How do you suppose I save $424? And 84 cents. <laughs> Come on, Daddy. Mm -hmm. Bye, dear. Bye, darling. See you. Yes? I got a delivery here for Mrs. Parsons next door, but there's nobody home. Oh, that's all right. I'll take it for her. It's furniture. Oh. And that is, it's kind of a chair, only we won't be delivering out this way again until next week. Oh, well, if it's just a chair, Willie can take it over later. Bring it in. Oh, thanks a lot. I think it's a chair. You want it in here? Yes, please. Okay, in here, Charlie. Just put it right there. Right. <sighs> <laughs> hey, Charlie, isn't that the busiest looking thing you ever seen? It <laughs> just happens to be a Victorian love seat. Well, lady, it's a sense George Washington never slept there. Please sign here. Victoria was after George Washington. She never got him with that, I bet you. <laughs> Let's go, Charlie. <laughs>
You played a good game, Daddy. Yes, 81 isn't bad for me. You know, I'll bet if I'd have started years ago, I'd be right up with the big boys now. You mean like Slam and Sammy Sneed? Why not? Slew and Stew Irwin, they'd be calling me. You know, as a matter of fact, if I hadn't gotten into that sand trap on the 18th green, I'd have broken 80. It took me three to get out. I know, but... Dad... Anna, I wasted two strokes just because you kept trying to talk to me. You know I told you never to talk to me while I'm shooting. But, Daddy... No, no. You know better than that. But, Daddy, I was just trying to tell you that the ball in the sand trap was Mr. Bennett's. No, don't be silly. But it was. I can prove it. Huh? You always use K-28s, don't you? That's right. Well, here's the ball you played, and it's a top flight. You mean to tell me that I was shooting Bennett's ball? And it cost me the hole. Why didn't you tell me? I tried to tell you, Daddy, but you told me... Not to say a word, I know. Stupid stewer when they call me. <laughs> well, what about polishing up my irons for me? Hey, that's not part of a caddy's duties. You want me to give you those golf lessons, don't you? That did it. <laughs> Mm. Kids are funny. All she'd had to say was wrong ball before I could have stopped her, and then I'd have won the hole. <laughs> oh. What's that? What's that? Where's your mother? Well, she went to a luncheon. What's up? <laughs> Yikes! What's that? That's just what I'd like to know. Oh, Daddy, did you buy that to surprise Mommy? I'd just as soon surprise her with a tarantula. Well, where do you suppose it came from? Offhand, I'd say the Chamber of Horrors. But what's it doing here? I guess maybe Mommy bought it. Remember this morning she was saying something about wanting to do the room over? Well, why didn't she just call in a house wrecker? Surely she didn't buy this thing. Uh, well, she did mention something about Victorian. Oh. I think this is early Victorian. Well, if it is, I'll take her leave Sears Roebuck. I like it. Well, you know, this makes me very upset. I never meant to make her feel that we'd have to resort to second-hand furniture. I like it. Especially something like this. Yeah. I like it. Oh, stop saying that. You sound like Jerry Lewis. Yes. Well, I'll take care of this quickly. Jackie, you get me the classified telephone directory and the phone. What are you going to do, Dad? And I'm going to unload that thing on the first second-hand dealer who will take it away. But maybe Mommy will get mad. After all, she bought it. I'm not going to have this house cluttered up with a lot of second-hand, worm-eaten, broken-down antiques. Uh, anyway, she won't divorce me over it. And if she does, she can have custody of the love seat. Let's see. Ah, oh, here's one. Sam, I'll buy anything. He'll buy anything, huh? Well, in the words of our immortal Willie, let's see him put his money where his mouth is. Huh? <laughs> Let me have that. I'm going over to Helen's, Dad. All right. I don't see what's so awful about it. Well, you're young, darling. <laughs> Hello, Sam, I'll buy anything. This is Stu Irwin. Could you come over to my house and pick up a piece of uh, furniture? 413 Medvale. Well, that's good. Hurry it up, will you? <laughs> well, what do you think of it, Willie? I don't rightfully know. It looks <laughs> kind of unfriendly. <laughs> what is it, Mr. Irwin? That, Willie, is an old-fashioned love seat. Oh, love seat? Mm-hmm. A fella had to have mighty long arms in those days, huh? <laughs> yeah. Now, let's see how they worked it. Say, I'm the boy. I'll sit here. Huh? <laughs> you be the girl, Willie. You sit there. Oh, yes. <laughs> if I'd have known this, I'd have wore a tie. <laughs> now, let's see. Turn around, though, Willie. This room. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder they had such long courtships in those days. It took them two years just to get acquainted. You know something, Mr. Irvin? Why? If a fella got the hang of this thing, he could smooch his girl and watch wrestling on television at the same time. <laughs> now, put your left hand with your thumb on it just like that and bring your right hand over so that it forms a bead, see? All right, now bring the club back slowly, keeping the left arm straight, bend the wrist, that's it. All right, now hold it. All right, now down and follow through. <laughs> Too fast, huh? 
I said follow through, not fly through. Try it again. Okay. Dad, do you suppose Mom will be awful mad about you selling your love seat? Jackie, golf is strictly a mental game. You mustn't have anything else on your mind. Here, let me show you. Now, you must feel comfortable at all times. Why should she be mad? After all, we usually consult each other on all matters. Oh, Dad? Yes? Mother's just getting out of Mrs. Carter's car. Oh, file this. Huh? I mean, uh, I'll take care of this. Well, you tell her, Dad. I'll say, June, I have a standing in this community which I won't have jeopardized with second-hand furniture. And furthermore, I'll say, we usually consult each other. And after all, I'll say, I have a right to know what you're spending our money on. Of course, she'll be upset. I'll say. She'll probably cry, and then she won't want to eat any dinner. I'm just not hungry, dear, she'll say. Then I'll get mad and holler. And then, of course, she won't want to go to the movies tonight. Fine thing. The only night this week I have a chance for some relaxation. Well. All right, don't go to the movies. See if I care. Stu, what are you saying? Uh, huh? Uh, well, I... I, I don't remember. I... Was it very hot on the golf course, dear? Oh, yes. Terribly, terribly. Uh, June, come into the living room. Uh, June, um, I want you to understand that the furniture in our home is just as important to me as it is to you. Oh, darling, if you're still worried about this morning, forget it. I'm in no hurry to refurnish, and when I do, I... Why, well, it's gone. Well, as a matter of fact... Oh, I'm um... so glad. Glad? Yes, I know I shouldn't have taken it in the first place. Well, you certainly shouldn't have. I hope you didn't have too much trouble getting it over there. I hate it for Blanche to have to have it sent out again. Blanche? What's she got to do with this? Why, she bought it. Oh, she did? Well, I'll thank her to confine her bad taste in house furnishing to herself. Why, Stu, that's the first time I ever heard you say an unkind word behind anyone's back. Blanche has a perfect right to put whatever she likes in her own home without consulting you. Her own home? Do you mean that that, 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 that thing belonged to Blanche? Certainly. Well, I guess I'd better get dinner ready. Oh. Oh, Jackie. Jackie. Stu. Yes? If you didn't know that love seat belonged to Blanche, why did you take it over there? Well, uh... <sighs> What's the matter, darling? I... I didn't take it. Oh, June, I thought you bought it for us, so I sold it. You sold it? Yes. You sold Blanche's love seat? Yeah, you needn't shout. I thought it was ugly and, oh, how was I to know? Oh, Mother, don't be angry with Dad for selling your love seat. It wasn't practical. It wasn't attractive. And I'll tell you something else it wasn't. Mine. Stu, I want you get that back right away. All right, all right. I only just sold it. I'll call Sam right now. All right. And incidentally, suppose I had bought it. Do you mean to say you turn around and toss it out just like that? Why not? I have a standing in this community. I have a right to an opinion of what we have in our home. I have... I have... I have a headache. I'm sorry, Mr. Irwin, but like I told you, I already sold a love seat to the Marvin Auction Rooms. You know I ain't got much call for such <laughs> antiques like that around here, and besides... Hello? Hello? Goodbye. Who was it on the phone? That guy I bought the love seat from. Like the fellow on the radio says, people are funny, all right. First, they beg you to take something off their hands. Then they beg you to bring it back. We'll let him get it from Marvin. Hey, you know, Sam, if he's so anxious to get it back, maybe he's found out something about it. You mean maybe it's worth something? Well, you know how it is with antiques. <laughs> you remember that pitcher and basin that time? Sixty-five dollars you got for it. Yeah. Vera, I got to get that love seat back myself. Only if Marvin sees me bidding on it, he'll know there's something fishy. Get someone else to bid on it for you. Maybe that high school kid who works for the druggist after school. That's right. He wants to make some extra money. I'll speak to him right away. Hmm. What a head that wife of mine's got on her shoulders. Thanks. Say, uh... If I'm so smart, why ain't I rich? Because you're married to me. Mm -hmm. 
I can't do it, Mr. Irwin. I'd like to help you out, but we never sell anything off the floor. Oh, but look. I'm sorry. You'll have to come in tonight and bid on the love seat. Tonight? But I can't wait until tonight. Oh, please sell me the thing. Believe me, no one in his right mind would want to buy it. I mean, well, you see, I happen to have a special use for it. Well, uh, frankly, I wouldn't know what price to set. You see, a funny thing about antiques, you might have a chair one night isn't worth two dollars. Yet find the customer who wants it, and it's worth 500 I know. You know, collectors of antiques search the four corners of the globe for rare objects. This one must have been dug up at Madame Tussauds' waxworks or King Tut's tomb. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, well, you'll have to excuse me. Got to get things set up for tonight. The auction starts at 8 o'clock. Yeah. i tell you what. What? I'll do my best to put the love seat up for bidding early in the evening. Thanks. I hate you. We'll return to the Irwins in just a moment. And now, back to the Irwins. All right, Jackie, you may light one lamp. There goes the telephone again. Joyce. Oh, Mother, please let me answer it. Maybe it's Stanley. Or maybe it's Blanche Parsons to ask about her love seat. And what am I supposed to tell her? That your father sold it? Gosh, Dad could be arrested for selling something that didn't belong to him. Right now, I consider that an idea to conjure with. But what if it's Stanley to tell me about our date tonight? Well, whoever it was, the phone has stopped ringing. Oh, that's jazzy. Fifteen is bid. Do I hear twenty? Do I hear twenty? Twenty. Twenty is bid. Do I hear more? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Let's hear more. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Uh, twenty-four. Twenty-four. Do I hear more? Twenty-four is bid. Twenty-four. Going. Going. Sold. The lady in the red hat. And now we have something that no home should be without. A genuine old-fashioned mustache cup. It is made of genuine bone china. Now, uh, what have I bid? Two dollars. Two dollars is bid. Will anyone make it three? Willie. Willie. Two dollars is bid. Uh, who'll make it three? Sold to the gentleman in the bow tie. Right this way, sir. Step right up and I'll give it to you. You gonna give me what? The mustache cup you just bought. You raised your hand, didn't you? No, sir. And you got a bargain, too. And that'll be three dollars. Three dollars? <laughs> Congratulations. You're welcome. What have I got myself into now, Mr. Irvin? How come I to help you with the love seat? Willie, never raise your hand at an auction sale. But what am I going to do with a mustache cup? I don't even have a mustache and no money either. It's a great spot for old razor blades. And here we have a genuine old soup tureen. Imported from England. What am I bid? Two dollars. Do I hear more? Two dollars is bid. Who'll bid three? Three dollars. Four. Four fifty. Four seventy-five. Four seventy-five is bid. Who'll bid five? Who'll bid five? <laughs> Sold to Mr. Irwin for five dollars. What? Oh. <laughs> Mr. Irwin, look like you got yourself a deal for old razor blades. Yeah. You keep bidding until I tell you to stop. Yeah, but I sure hope it don't take long. I gotta get out of here. I'll be behind here. And now we have this genuine old Victorian love seat. And in good condition. Now, let's hear some bids. Five dollars. Five dollars? I can't start into bidding at that figure. Let's hear something better. Uh, ten dollars. That's better. Ten dollars is bid. Do I hear more? Eleven dollars. Eleven? Eleven? Uh, do I hear twelve? Twelve dollars. Twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. Thirteen fifty. Thirteen fifty. Thirteen fifty. Thirteen fifty. Do I hear fifteen? What would a kid want with a thing like that? Thirteen fifty. Going. Going. Fifteen dollars. Sixteen. 
Twenty dollars. Twenty is bid. Do I hear more? Twenty? Ah, the heck with it. It's too high for me. Come on. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Going? Going? Gone. Sold to Mr. Irwin for twenty dollars. Thanks. Twenty dollars for something I sold for two. Come on, Willie. Let's get out of here. Just like to get my hands on that fool boy, that's all. He's here. <gasps> Stanley? No, your father. With or without? With, thank heavens. I'll open the door. You turn the lights on. Careful, Willie, careful. Don't break the darn thing. What a night this has been. There. The Parsons can get it over to their house themselves. Oh, thank you, Willie. You're welcome, sir. Oh, Mr. Irvin. Yes? You want me to bring the soup tureen in? No. No, you run along, Willie. You've been very helpful. Thank you. Soup tureen? What does he mean? I... I don't know. <laughs> Jim, do you know what it cost me to retrieve this monstrosity? Twenty dollars. Oh, Stu. Yes. Jackie, you run and call Mrs. Parsons and tell her her love seat was left here. Oh, mm. great. Now our line will be busy. And all because of some fool boy who kept bidding against me. A boy wanted that? Of course he couldn't have wanted it. It's probably some new form of juvenile delinquency. Or maybe he was in cahoots with the auctioneer. I don't know. But if I ever meet him face to face... Uh -huh. Oh, that must be Stanley. Yeah. Oh, Daddy, please be nice to him. Well, of course I will. Am I in the habit of being rude to people in my own home? <laughs> oh. I'm sorry to be so late, but someone gave me a job to do. Oh, that's all right. Daddy, this is Stanley. Uh, I'm very happy to... I know you. You. How dare you come calling on my daughter? Daddy! When less than 20 minutes ago, you were practically taking the money right out of my pocket. Oh, boy, a big pocket. This is better than no arranger. Uh, look, look, Mr. Irwin, I can explain. You see, I worked for the druggist after school and... Yoo May I come in? You left the door open. <laughs> and the man next door asked me to go to the auction. That's and... most interesting. We'll talk about it later. I've been calling you all evening. <laughs> well, I was right here. But then your telephone must be out of order. Oh, the love seat. Uh, yes, I, it was delivered while you were out. Yes, I, I was going to bring it right over. How do you uh, like it? Huh? Why, it's uh, perfectly darling. Yes. <laughs> and you, Stu? Who, me? Oh, it's charming. Oh, yes, indeed. Very quaint. <laughs> I'm That's... so glad. You see, when I bought it, I said to myself, Blanche Parsons, don't you miss this wonderful bargain. Because if you don't keep it, it'll be just perfect yes. for the Irwins. Huh? But of course you'll keep it. Oh, yes, yes, Blanche. This would be perfect in your home. That's just <laughs> typical of you two generous people. But I've always wanted to do something really nice, and this is it. Oh. May I be the first to start you off on your new Victorian living room? Well, that's very kind, but really now... I'll there, there's nothing to discuss. The love seat is yours from the Parsons with love. We'll just have the best time fixing up uh, this room. <laughs> well, I must run. Good night now. Good night. <laughs> I don't believe it. It's like a horrible nightmare when you dream you've forgotten to put on your trousers. <clears throat> huh? oh, oh, Joyce, of course. Oh, oh, yes. Let's talk about it upstairs. Upstairs? Yes, dear. Jackie, it's time for bed. Huh. Good night, Mr. Irwin. Good night. And if there's anything I can do for you any day after school, you I... You might start by selling that thing. You might auction it off. You should be very well versed in that kind of a thing by now. Huh? Oh, I know somebody who wants it. You do? Oh, yeah. He buys anything. He wants it all right. He does? Yeah, his name is Sam. Sam? Oh, yes, Sam. <laughs> Come on, dear. Yes, yes, I'm coming. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Say it. What is this thing, anyway? It's a... It's a love seat. Oh. Yeah? Tell Sam. <laughs> Stu! Look. Know something, Jim? We'd better keep that low seat after all.
be with us again next week when General Mills presents June and Stu Irwin in Trouble with Father.